How's it going everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Let's talk about vacuum pumps and manual wastegates. So let's start off with why does a 6.5 have a vacuum pump? This is pretty easy to go over. Uh, the vacuum pump essentially, um, it does what it says it does. Of course, a diesel does not make vacuum like a gasoline engine. So in order to allow certain functions to happen, such as the turbo actuation or on the older model 6.5s, um, it would operate your heater controls. It would use vacuum to do so, not so much on the uh, later models of 6.5, like 94 and up, but uh, the earlier models did have vacuum controls and a diesel doesn't make vacuum so it needs a vacuum pump in order to do so uh, let's go in here I got an old vacuum pump so this is an old vacuum pump and on these six fives they were pretty notorious for going out um, some common problems that you'll see with these vacuum pumps is the exhaust is just pumping out a ton of black smoke the truck does not have the power that it once did and it just feels really sluggish a uh, hard time pulling a trailer or even just getting out of its own way so it kind of leads back to the vacuum pump and brand new um, to test and see if a uh, vacuum pump is good. When you spin this over, you can kind of hear that diaphragm moving. I don't know if you can hear that from where I'm sitting, but <clears throat> that, if it was uh, brand new, it should make like a honking noise. Uh, you should have good pull on this fitting right here, like you could put your thumb over it and that would be a real bear to turn over uh, in relation to the engine let's see I have a stock 6.5 block sitting right here and it would originally sit moderately right there let's see if I can pop the hood on the wife's truck because it is lower than mine and it would sit right down here on the 94 and 95 model it would be right underneath your AC compressor and on the 96 and newer it would be on the same side underneath your alternator so now that we've kind of talked about uh, vacuum pumps. Let's talk about wastegates. The vacuum pump on the 6.5 uh, in later models, its only job is to actuate the wastegate on your stock turbo. Basically, what is happening is when you rev up the engine, this pulley turns faster, creating more vacuum from the diaphragm on the vacuum pump. That vacuum pump, there will be a solenoid, there will be a line coming off of this fitting that goes up to a vacuum solenoid, and then you can trace the air lines, and one of them comes over to your uh, wastegate on your turbo and all that uh, vacuum pump is doing is holding the blow off for the turbo shut so you can see on the back side of the turbo here that little flap that is your blow off so all that vacuum pump is doing is holding this shut under pressure and once it reaches a certain PSI the valve will open and prevent the turbo from spooling anymore. So why would somebody want to delete the vacuum pump? Pretty good reasons. Um, 
one, they are a parasite. They more or less rob just the tiniest little bit of horsepower. Any accessory on the front of the engine will cause some sort of horsepower loss, if you will. Um, another reason is they are very common to go out and it is so frustrating to keep replacing parts time and time again. Um, you can either just rip it off and get a different length belt, which I'll show you on both mine and my wife's truck because they are a different setup, um, even though the vacuum pump is in the same place. Um, but it's it's just frustrating. Another reason to get rid of the vacuum pump and go with a manual wastegate is to get more boost out of your turbo. The factory vacuum pump with, with the uh, waste, factory wastegate set up is set for about 5 to 8 pounds of boost. And it's, it's enough if you like to stay stock. Uh, if you do a whole lot of towing or anything like that, I would definitely recommend getting rid of the vacuum pump or just going with a manual wastegate and plugging that little line off. You'll see a tremendous difference in the responsiveness, the fuel economy, and the towing capability of your 6.5. So let's look at some examples of a manual wastegate that you can do. Of course, you can go online and buy your own manual wastegate that it, and install it that is no big deal at all um it's it's pretty common to do but if you just don't have the coin in order to do so here are some options that you can do um before i would install a manual wastegate of course uh we'll go into that just a little bit but this is the manual wastegate on my pickup and you can see that it retains the factory wastegate uh, housing more or less on the bottom and it goes down and connects to the rod that holds that flap shut. It has a manual spring that is holding tension on that little flap and then uh, I set my PSI with this nut here and I lock it in place with this nut here. Uh, in order to do that, to retain the uh, factory wastegate housing, uh, of course you would grind. You would of course grind this off right here and you would take a tap uh, or a die and thread this rod on the end in order to um, install a spring between the two. Pretty common. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things if you don't want to spend the money in order to go and get one of those uh, manual wastegate deals that some other people sell this is a pretty good option. Again, you can go out and get those kits. There's nothing wrong with them. And, you know, personal preference, if it's just easier for you to buy it and then make it, then that's your choice. No shame in doing anything. So this is my wife's truck and the previous owner did this to this turbo and it works. But this isn't the setup that I would have originally gone with. You can see that they went and got a spring. They took the they took the rod off in order to just hook a spring onto the flap. And then they took the mount and put one of these uh, anchors in and a nut on the back and this setup is still adjustable of course i have this much travel and i can replace the spring with a different tension uh it works there's nothing wrong with the way it works just 
you know, it, it isn't the way I would have done it, but hey, I mean, it still gets more boost than factory. So let's talk about some of the drawbacks of getting rid of the vacuum pump and switching to a manual wastegate. Number one, getting rid of the factory vacuum pump is going to throw a code when you get rid of the vacuum pump and the vacuum pump solenoid. You can see this pedestal right here and I believe I have it zip tied up, but on my truck over here, that little plug right there, that is for your vacuum solenoid. And when you unplug that, it's not going to tell the ECU that you're getting vacuum or you're not getting vacuum. So it's going to throw a code. Um, not necessarily going to throw a light until, like a check engine light, until you uh, go into a overboost scenario. But it is going to throw a code and it is going to pop up. Number two, like I said uh, just a second ago, you can run into an overboost scenario without a tuned ECU or a tuner on your 6.5. If you run over 10 to 12 pounds of boost without getting a tune or a tuned ECU, it is going to throw a uh, check engine light, it is going to throw a code, and it is going to put you in D rate. Now you can keep just shutting the truck off and turning it back on and trying to stay under 10 PSI or 12 PSI and get away with it but of course it is best to just get a tuned ecu and or a uh, tuner on your truck depending on which years you have number three again with overboost if you do not have head studs you can overboost and the head gaskets are going to blow um, anywhere between the 15 to 18 PSI range. I know it varies between everybody, but uh, I've noticed uh, without head studs in between the 15 and 18 PSI range that you're going to blow head gaskets. And the, on these 20 year old plus trucks, you know. You make that call if you want to head stud it for first or if you want to just get the little bit of boost you can out of it before the head studs and then do them at a later date. Uh, both mine and my wife's truck are head studded. So, I mean, I'm running 20 PSI on my truck and on a stock GM5 turbo don't do that <laughs> let's get into the next part is that these factory turbos are not made for that high of boost um, 17 18 psi on a factory gm 5 8 4 3 you are pushing it to its limit there is, you are going to cause premature wear on that turbo, whether it be on the bearing or, the, or bearings of the seals or anything like that. These turbos are not made for 20 pounds of boost. Um, you can ask my turbo. <laughs> it hates me, but ah, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Uh, the head gaskets and uh, if you're going for the higher boost numbers a different turbo and in tuned ECU or a tuner on your 6.5 are a must um, in order to get higher boost out of them. Boost gauge. Before you go ahead and get rid of the vacuum pump and or just do, do the manual wastegate you need a boost gauge you need to know what you are throwing at your engine for uh, forced induction all you do to install a 
PSI or boost gauge is you would first remove your intake horn. Do not drill the intake horn while it is on the motor. You are going to send metal shavings down into the intake of the truck and you are going to pay hell because you'll either bend valves or just cause some more carnage. Don't do that. Remove this, then drill your hole and get the uh, fittings in the line as well as the boost gauge. And that line, let's see if I can turn on the light. See that, that line just goes right into the back of the boost gauge and what that is reading is the PSI or the forced induction from the turbo into the intake plenum and it is creating a reading on that gauge. It is a mechanical gauge, that's how it functions. I hate, 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 hate these little chintzy plastic bullshit lines so i upgraded <laughs> um i run these little push lock fittings with a much thicker line much stronger line it's just for airlines on like an airbag system or a uh, big rig if you will just a little quarter inch line and <clears throat> i installed a new fitting on the well on the back of my gauge. So anytime, if I ever were to get a rub hole <clears throat> in the line somewhere, uh, I can just push this lock fitting and replace the line, that's no big deal. It is much easier to get uh, that line over like the line in my wife's truck, um, much easier to get a hold of that. So of course when removing the vacuum pump, you're going to run into an issue where the belt is too short. <laughs> um, you can either buy one of those bullshit pulleys that are going to go bad one way or another, or you can get a shorter belt. Now depending on which setup you have on your 6.5 will determine which belt you get. Um, of course, mine and my wife's are different, so I will show you both belts. All right, so on my truck, you can see that I have the alternator over here on the passenger side. I have the dual thermostat housing, and I have the AC compressor over here on the driver's side. That part number, if you are going to eliminate your uh, vacuum pump, Let's see, can you focus? K060994. On the wife truck, you can see that the alternator is over here on the driver's side. I have the single thermostat housing, and the AC compressor is over here on the passenger side. That part number is 6PK2565. Again, that is just if you want to eliminate the vacuum pump and do the manual wastegate. Now, I know I'm going to get a few questions about uh, can I just put a uh, manual wastegate without getting rid of my vacuum pump so I can retain the factory belt or if my truck runs the heater controls off vacuum how does that work absolutely you can just run a manual wastegate and not delete the vacuum pump remember that that vacuum pump is going to go bad at some point but for you guys with the uh, vacuum assisted uh, heater controls, you got to keep your vacuum pump. I'm sure there's some way that you can get rid of them, but it's just as easy to keep it right where it is. It's not a terrible thing to replace. Like it's not 
like a several hour job or anything like that it just gets annoying i think that just about wraps it up as far as uh vacuum pump delete and or uh we're making the wastegate on the turbo manual wastegated um please if i missed anything leave it down in the comments below or if you have any questions uh please leave them down in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them as soon as i possibly can Y'all are keeping me absolutely busy getting a hold of me, um, trying to help y'all out with your 6.5s, doing the best I can. But if you have any video ideas, questions, comments, concerns that you would like me to talk about or go over, please get a hold of me. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, leave your questions and comments down below. I will be sure to answer them as soon as possible. But again, if I miss anything, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to update my information on 6.5. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you legends in the next one.